Jess. Are these live? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the KFC Yum Center and the 2016 NCAA South Regional of the Men's Basketball Championship. In just a few minutes, we'll be having uh, the interviews this afternoon. We'll start with Coach Jim Laranega of Miami. And that'll be followed by the Miami student athletes. And that will begin at right around one o'clock, so here in just a few minutes. Those of you who will be joining us in the uh, interview room, please make sure your cell phones and uh, mobile devices are set to silent. And remember, no flash photography or recording of video here in this room. If you're remaining in the media workroom, please uh, do your best to keep quiet and respect the interviews going on next door.
Coach Larinaga is making his way to the interview room now. Let me go ahead and uh, let you know, remind you when uh, you have a question, just raise your hand so we can get the, the two microphones in the room to you and wait for those and then uh, ask your question. Let us know who you are and where you're from and uh, then we'll get started with questions for uh, Coach. First though, once he gets settled. Right, right. Gotcha. When he gets settled, we'll uh, appreciate an opening statement from him. Coach, welcome to Louisville. Thank you. Pleasure to be here, and uh, we're excited to be playing in the Sweet 16. Um, excited to be here in Louisville at the Yum Center. This is uh, one of the homes of, of an ACC team, the Louisville Cardinals, and uh, my Miami basketball team has played here exactly one time uh, a year ago, and uh, we're looking forward to getting our second opportunity to play in uh, against a great opponent in Villanova. Good deal. Thank you, Coach. Let's open it up for questions. Janine, we're here in the middle. Janine Edwards, ESPN. Hi, Coach. Hi, Janine. Um, when I spoke to you guys last week, you made a point after Davon Reed told me, he described this year as fun, you made a point of saying that that means we're doing our job because we want them to have fun. And I saw the video from last night of your guys playing baseball. Why did you feel like last night, this point, was where you really wanted to loosen them up and let them have some fun? Why was it last night? Um, last night was actually about the fifth time this year I planned it, but the other four times never came to fruition because something else came up and it interfered with, with what we were going to do. We were actually going to do it at home on Monday, and uh, the players had some obligations that uh, prevented us from doing it at the end of practice. So um, we decided that once we got here, we weren't planning any meeting last night, that we would do it after dinner, and, and it worked out great because there was a very nice ballroom that was available. Thanks, Coach. Let's go uh, third row in the middle and then on the end and then in the red. So we'll work our way that way. Right. In the gray. There you go. Kyle Tucker, Courier Journal. How significant do you think it is to Sheldon to the chance to get back home to Houston for a Final Four? And how significant has he been to your team this season? Well, I I'm sure that's a great motivator for him, but I think it's a great motivator for any college basketball player to want to achieve uh, uh, Final Four participation. Uh, I think in Sheldon's case, he's a fantastic player and a, just an absolutely tremendous young man. I love coaching him. I love being around him. Uh, he's got a, a, an endearing personality. Um, I said after our, our last game, like at a, one of our timeouts, he said, let me take the ball out of bounds. Uh, and inbounds and break the press. And I said, Ed, you're, you're a very funny guy. You, you haven't done that in your entire college career and all of a sudden now in uh, the round of 32, that, that's gonna become a new role for you. But that's kind of his, his mindset. I wanna do whatever it takes to win the game. And he would have been very capable of inbounding and handling the press. It's just not, not his job. Uh, that job goes to Davon Reed and Angel Rodriguez and and Jaquan Newton. So, um, but he's uh, very much fun to be around and, and uh, he's a great teammate. He's very, very unselfish. I'm not sure there's another player in the country, and I don't know exactly what his, his uh, point total is, but he's nearing 2,000 points on very, very few shots. And if you look at his shot attempts, compared to other 2,000-point scorers, I would guess he's taken at least a third less attempts from the field than anybody else that's ever scored 2,000 points. Pat? Oh, OK. We'll start there and then go to Pat. And then uh, Joe Giuliano, Philadelphia Inquirer. Uh, Jim, uh, I hear you and Coach Ryder are relatively close. Could you describe uh, your relationship with him and also uh, what concerns you most about Villanova's team? Well. Um, I've known Jay a very, very long time, and uh, we've been on trips together. We've sat together at AAU events. 
And I think he's just a tremendous individual, great coach. Um, he's built an incredible basketball program, a perennial powerhouse in the Big East. Uh, he has his team seated very high these last several years, you know, number one, number two. They've just done a great job. Uh, their, their style of play, I think, is very inviting to high school recruits. They do a lot of ball screens. They play multiple defenses. Um, and we think we're very similar. We're almost like the mirror image of them. We do a lot of ball screen. We play a lot of of uh, man to man defense, but we'll change it up from time to time. Uh, I've just enjoyed getting to know him and exchanging uh, drills with him and talking basketball. Pat. Pat. Uh, Pat Forty from Yahoo Sports. Jim, I remember when you took the Miami job. There were some people that were theorizing, "Oh, he wants an easy job on the way to retirement." Obviously, you haven't approached it that way at all. What was your mindset coming to Miami, and what has kept you going at a high level? Well, first of all, I, I don't know of a coaching job that's easy. You know, what, what is it? If you coach at a, a high major level with one of the perennial powerhouses, it's, it's easy? No, those guys, the expectations on their shoulders is they got to win the national championship every year to meet others' expectations, or it was a bad year, or you got to get to the Final Four. If you're one of the Hall of Fame coaches who's built his career – on uh, annual success, the expectation is very high. Um, but someone who coaches at the, the low major or mid-major level also has a, a, a hard job because they're trying to win in a situation where they might not have all the resources that they need to really compete at the highest level, and yet they're still judged. Everybody in coaching is now judged on whether you make the big dance. So I, 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 there have been coaches being let go or changing jobs that have won 21, 22 games, and the school says it's not enough. Uh, when, when I accepted the head coaching job at Miami, it had always been a dream of mine to coach in the ACC. And uh, there are very few opportunities, especially for someone in his 60s. And, and uh, when the Miami job opened up, I, I called a couple of my friends in Miami who are very successful businessmen and uh, very tied in to the university, they're alums, and they, they know all the, the people on the uh, board of trustees and they know the president, and they put in a good word for me. And then Doc Rivers uh, recommended me and uh, Arnie Duncan recommended me and through the, Donna Shalala, President Shalala was a big Democrat, so Arnie helped me there. Uh, Sean Eichhorst, the athletic director, is from, Mar from Wisconsin and went to law school in Marquette, so Doc Rivers' uh, recommendation was hugely important. And then when my staff and I got there, we just felt like, all right, we have a challenge. There are a lot of things we were told that probably couldn't accomplish. Uh, the first was we'd never be able to beat Duke or Carolina. Second one, we'd never be able to win an ACC regular season or tournament. And the third was we'd never be able to draw a crowd. Well, we've had, uh, I would say, moderate success against Duke and Carolina. Uh, we have a winning record against Duke, and uh, we're batting 500 against the Tar Heels. Uh, we've won an ACC tournament championship and a regular season championship, and we're now selling out every game. So we've accomplished an awful lot, but we still uh, have a major goal in front of us, and that major goal when we came was to build a team that could win a national championship. Try to get a couple more in. Mike Lepresti, NCAA.com. Ten years down the road from George Mason, looking back over time, what do you think that meant to the tournament at large, just in the expectations of what schools could have? And secondly, what personally has it ended up meaning to you all those years? Well, I think uh, Barry Collier said it best to me. Uh, Barry Collier is the athletic director at uh, Butler University. He's the former head coach at Butler. And after we made it uh, to the Final Four in 06, he, he told me, he said, listen, you've, you've just uh, broke, broken the four-minute mile barrier. Now there's going to be other mid-major programs that think they can get there. And sure enough, uh, four years later, Butler not only made it to the Final Four but to the championship game and then repeated that feat in 2011. 
VCU did it in 2011, and Wichita State did it in 2013. So I, I, I think we, we created an expectation that just because you're not a high major program, that doesn't mean you can't compete with the big boys and, and get to the Final Four or even win a national title. And as what it has meant to me is it's, it's, it's been uh, a tremendous milestone in my career that has created a lot of opportunities. Uh, and uh, we've tried to take advantage of those opportunities, including coaching at the University of Miami. Tim, last question. Tim Sullivan, Courier Journal. Uh, the four teams that are here are fairly upper class dominated. And I'm wondering, from your perspective, what advantage does that experience bring versus teams that might be have more NBA type freshmen? Well, I, I know every team feels like they have NBA caliber players, uh, so there's a lot of confidence in a player with that ability. But the experience is probably makes you hungrier, especially for a program like ours that has never been to the Elite Eight or to the Final Four. So hopefully our guys are very hungry and determined uh, to accomplish something that's never happened uh, in our school's history. Coach, we got to let you go. Get your players in here. Appreciate your time. Oh, thank you, everybody. Thank you. Good luck. The Miami locker room is open until 1.30. How's it going? Good. Welcome back. Okay, we're uh, going to have questions for the Miami student athletes here as they get settled in. We'll start with Kyle and then over to Janine. So right here. In the... Yeah, go ahead. Kyle Tucker, Courier Journal. Sheldon, if you could just talk about uh, leaving home, leaving Texas after the first couple of years there, uh, the journey from there to here and what you've learned about yourself in that time, and also uh, the, the prospect of getting home to Houston for a Final Four, what that would mean to you. Um, well, I went through a lot of struggles at Texas. Um, I mean, I, I actually felt I had two great years um, on the court, but it was just you know certain things that people didn't see you know, um, whether it was doing practice or doing the games that I wasn't comfortable with. So, you know, I felt like I needed a, you know, a change of venue. So I wanted to transfer. And I think that was the best decision for me. And after I took my visit, um, I kind of fell in love with the coaches and especially Coach L. And once I found, found out Angel was transferring, I wanted to play with him because I was so used to playing against him in the Big 12. And I knew that he would be a great teammate. So I knew it would be a great team. And um, the, the day after I left, I kind of knew where, where I was going. Um, I just kept it to myself. And once I was ready to commit, I commit. I committed. So um, uh, that was that. And as far as I'm returning to Houston, it, it'll be the best thing in my life. Um, you know, so I'm, I'm praying and hoping we get there. It'll you know, take one game at a time. And it, it'll be great to, you know, play a Final Four in Houston. Um, I probably need 100 tickets, but uh, I, I just want to get there. Janine Edwards, ESPN. This is for all three of you, and Angel, you can start if you would. 
because um, you had said after the game the other night against Wichita State that you thought it was great for you guys to have been tested like that at this point in the season, leading by 21, losing the lead, coming back. If each of you could just tell me what you think you got out of that experience that will help you going forward, what did you learn from that? Well, learned a lot of things. Um, one of them is the fact that um, nobody's going to quit. You know, at this point of the year, everybody knows you lose, you go home. It doesn't matter if you're up 20, 5, 30. Teams are going to fight to come back. Um, you know, and at the same time, it was great to, to learn that as a team, we were willing to take, a, you know, and that challenge a team coming back from 21 points. Um, definitely they had all the momentum. The crowd was into it. Um, you know, we definitely weren't playing with the same rhythm we started the game. Um, but we stayed together. Uh, we found a way to make plays to get ourselves going. And, and that's what it's about, you know, at this point in the season. It's about just finding a way to win a game for that day. Because after that, it's over. You move on and you have a new opportunity. Thanks, Angel. Let's go Tony, then Sheldon on that question, please. Um, I think for, for me, what I think, I mean, I, I strongly agree with him. I mean, um, it's always a game um, of um, win or go home. So, um, you know, that game really taught us a lot that, uh, um, you know, we got to we got to keep our focus and uh, never lose focus of uh, what we came to do. And uh, in the first half, we really had our focus and, uh, you know, we, we had really good defensive stops and um, on offense, we really shared the ball and, you know, we made great plays and uh, we held them to a starting point and, uh, in the first half. But coming into the second half, I think uh, we fell behind a little bit, you know, we lost focus and uh, we had to fight our way back. And uh, I mean, that is a great, uh, you know, time to really learn and uh, to build from. And uh, our captain here, Angel, I mean, he was uh, in the huddle every time he was just saying, you know, they've made their run, we got to make our run. And um, that was what really helped us. And nobody really, you know, dropped their head down or try to um, blame each other. You know, all we did was just pull together and we just kept rolling. And uh, Coach L was great. And, uh, you know, he just, you know, we made some sudden turnovers that wasn't forced by Wichita. We, we just made it because we lost focus and just inbounding the ball and stuff like that. And, um, the, but, you know, he, he called a timeout and all he said to us was that, guys, you got you to gotta be focused. I mean, you got you to gotta keep doing what you've been doing through the first half. And uh, I mean, their fans coming up, you know, screaming and yelling. I mean, that was bringing them back, and and we were losing our own fans. But w when we bounced back, and um, you know, we took back the lead. I mean, the energy came back, the focus came back, and you know, we we played great just to win. And I think um, that's where it all comes in. You know, adversity sometimes. You know, you just you just gotta keep fighting. Um, I, I think we just um, it, it really helped our character as a team. And, and helping us stay together as a team. You know, um, basketball is a game of runs. Um, we made our run the first 10 minutes and we kind of set the tone. And towards the end of the game, they, they made their run, um, a big run for them. So um, I think it really helped us, you know, stay poised on the stretch, like Coach always say, stay together as a team. And, and we, we made just enough plays to win the game. So, you know, that's all that matters, you know. Um, some teams, they, they kind of will get down on themselves or one guy would try to do it all in one play, but we stayed together as a team. Uh, we got the important stops we needed down the stretch, and, and that kind of helped us offensively. So um, I, th I think it was great that they took the lead with, with a couple you know, a couple minutes left. Kind of really helped us. Thank you. We're going two on the left, and then we'll circle back on the right here. C.L. Brown with ESPN.com. This question is for Angel and Sheldon. <laughs> Excuse me. The team in 2013 was maybe looked at as the best team in program history, but you guys can do what they weren't able to do just by getting to the Elite Eight. I was wondering if you could, uh, uh, where do you feel like this would place you guys in terms of program history? Does, would this make you the best ever if you're able you know, to, to get there? Do you even look at it that way? Let's go Sheldon, then Angel, please. Um, honestly, we've been hearing about it, um, that the program has never reached um, an Elite Eight. 
So we definitely want to be, you know, the first group of guys to, to do that, and it'll be a big accomplishment for us in the program. But um, I don't know, man. It's kind of up to up to y'all for that, for those comparisons. You know, we just try to, you know, win a game in advance. You know, I mean, it's called survive in advance for a reason. So, you know, that's our main focus, man. We just want to execute the game plan and, and try to try to advance. Well, first of all, they they were the team who started, you know, the the winning culture. Um, if you think, if you want to put it like that, under Coach L's, uh, um as a coach, you know what they did is definitely a huge accomplishment. Um, but you know what? It's, it's a different times. It's a different league. We, um, you know, we had a lot of new teams join the ACC for the regular season, and um, you know, as far as postseason, you know, um, we're really not trying to compare ourselves to them. We're just truly trying to do this for for each other. Um, but it's it's great to know that we have an opportunity to do something that's never been done in school, um, and that we're just literally a game away from it. But at the end of the day, it just it comes down to what I always say: the goal is not to break a record, to get here, to get there. It's bottom line, to win a championship, and that's what we're here for. Okay, in the back here on the right. Oh, I'm sorry, Teresa. Teresa, and then we'll go in the back on the right. Teresa Walker, Associated Press, uh, for, for each of you. Uh, Coach L said that uh, looking at Villanova almost like a, a mirror image of each other, you know, have swapped drills with Coach Wright and, and ball screening and defenses that you all play. When you're looking at Villanova, how familiar are you with what they're doing based on what you all do? Um, well, I think they, um, offensively, they like to shoot a lot of threes. And I think they get a lot of their momentum off threes. So, um, definitely want to run them off the three-point line. Don't want to let them get comfortable there. And they kind of play a pressure defense. Um, I'm pretty sure if they watch last game, they're probably going to pressure us because we had a couple of unforced turnovers. But, I mean, I have trust in our guards and, and myself that we'll take care of the ball, so that won't be a problem. But um, it's, it's a team that like to get up and, up and down, um, fast breaks just like us. Um, very similar team. So, I mean, it, it'll be a great game. Thanks in the back. Chris White from the Courier Journal. Uh, Sheldon and Angel in particular, um, you've been on teams before uh, that have had some, some postseason uh, play. And, and how do you lean on the next experience? And, and how does that shape uh, what's driving you guys this year? Um, you know what? I think it's not just my experience or Sheldon's experience. Tanya has a lot of experience, too. But as a team overall, you know, I think last year, even though it was a disappointment, disappointment it was definitely very helpful for the younger guys to gain some postseason experience. And, um, you know, as seniors, I think it, it, it goes far beyond just having experience. I think it, the motivation and the, um, you know, no, knowing that it, this is it. You know, if we lose, our college careers are over. Um, but we definitely have an opportunity to do something special. And, um, to hopefully la make make our career last um, an extra week and accomplish something special, like I said. Thanks, Angel. Let's go Tim and Kyle, and then that'll probably do it. Uh, for Tanya and uh, Sheldon, following up on the experience angle, as a veteran team, what advantage do you see when you're playing a younger team? And I'm not referring to Villanova, but last year, you know, Kentucky and Duke got to the Final Four with very freshman-dominated lineups. How do you attack that? Tanya? Um, I mean, we, um, we're really not a young team. I mean, uh, and the team we're playing, I don't think they're also a young team. It, it's just uh, guys with a lot of experience. And uh, Villanova has been, um, you know, in this Swiss 16 they were there last year. And, um, you know, they, they have a great coach and a great program. And, I mean, uh, we, we give them so much respect. We just... Uh, we just go in there and we just play. I mean, we come in there to just execute our, our game plan and um, play together, and um, you know try to try to help each other out. You know, in, in any area we're lacking because um, I mean the game. I mean, when you take the floor and the game starts, I mean there's so many other things you know that might be going on and within the game where um, if you need a score, you got to do your job. I mean, if you need a rebounder, you got to do your job. So. So things like that, I mean, I think um, that is where the, um, the experience comes in. 
and then for Sheldon and uh, for Angel and myself, I mean, uh, we've been in this position before and uh, all we got to do is just go in there and uh, pull in uh, a group of guys who, uh, who has not been here before and just um, try to pull them together to ourselves so that uh, we, could, we could do the right thing, you know, just to get a win. Go ahead, Kyle. Kyle Tucker, Courier Journal. Angel, having been there with him from the start, um, where have you seen uh, Sheldon grow? What do you think he's learned about himself since coming to Miami? And uh, also, how much has he talked about, or has he talked about uh, trying to get home to Houston for that Final Four? <laughs> um, you know what, I think I've seen him obviously grow the most as far as uh, his game. He's improved in a lot of things. He, he was always a uh, uh, a big time scorer before, but now he's doing it in a lot of different ways. And, um, you know, he still, in my opinion, hasn't learned to be as aggressive as we want him to be. But at the end of the day, we're, we're winning games, and that's all he cares about. Uh, you know, I know that for sure. Um, what was your other question? I'm sorry. Oh, and um, yeah, we definitely talked about it, in fact you know, multiple times before yesterday, but yesterday specifically, um, I remember we started talking about it because I was able to win a championship in Puerto Rico, and that was a very special feeling. And so I said, we got to get you to Houston and um, so you can know what it feels like to win a championship at home. So it's definitely a very exciting experience for, for all of us, especially for him because, of course, he's from Houston. All right, guys, we're out of time. Thank you, and good luck. Thank you. Okay, the Villanova locker room is open till 2. Welcome to Louisville, guys. Okay. How are you? All right. If you have questions, uh, go ahead and uh, raise your hand, let us know, and then tell us who you are and where you're from. We'll get a microphone to you. And we'll get started with the Wildcats. Uh, Joe Giuliano, Philadelphia Inquirer for all the players. Um, Miami uh, guards are experienced, and they seem to uh, drive the ball a lot. They've shot a lot of free throws. Uh, what do you guys see in the Miami guards and 
what about the plans to uh, you know defend them on start Thursday? With, sorry, start with Ryan, then Josh, then Daniel. Um, yeah, they have great drivers. Uh, they have great scores on the perimeter. I think one of the things that we're going to have to do to stop them is um, not show them any space, show them uh, our bodies and our triangles so that they uh, don't see the space to be able to drive into the paint. But uh, we know they're great shooters too, so it's going to be a tough matchup for us. Yeah, you know, just continuing with what Ryan said, they're experienced, they're you know, physical, they're strong. We just can't let them see space. we got to load to them. Uh, we can't just swipe at them. You know, hopefully, you know, they'll slow them down. We got to have them see our bodies, not seeing driving spaces, um, you know, able to get in the lane. So that's really the main thing, just being loading to them. Uh, I think also just adding to what they said, just guarding them as a team. You know, not one guy is going to stop uh, Rodriguez or McClellan. You know, it's going to be the whole team playing them. And I think uh, just us locking into our scouting report the way we did the last game, focusing on how uh, it was two main scorers in a game like this, you know, very similar. Thanks, guys. Kyle? Kyle Tucker, Courier Journal. Ryan, I know you've talked about this, but just how similar are you to your head coach and to the other guys? How similar is he uh, to your head coach? Um, I think we're, we're, we're definitely similar in that we have the same mindset of what uh, Villanova basketball is, just playing hard out on the floor, giving it your all, and uh, just, just kind of knowing, knowing everything out on the floor. I think... Uh, he thinks of me as the coach on the floor, and I think I'm an extension of Coach Wright. So I think um, I'm kind of the bridge between coach and player on the floor, and I can, if coach is getting on some of the guys, I know how to, how to just like uh, tell them in a, in a different tone and, and just kind of keep their head on straight to uh, not, get, not get frustrated and to know that we're all in this together. Yeah, uh, you want us to say, uh, uh, I'll just continue with what he said, just being a leader on the, you know, a coach on the court. Uh, you know, obviously, a lot of times, Coach Wright has tough love, uh, you know, with all of us. Um, he's able to kind of always, you know, be there, you know, be behind us, um, you know, talk to us, settle us down, um, and just, you know, say what Coach wants in a little bit of a friendlier, you know, nicer way. Uh, so he's able to really, you know, be a coach on the court and just keep us all together. Um, honestly, I don't think I don't think they're that much alike. I just think Arch is such a Villanova basketball player. Coach Wright has so much trust in him that he just you know he's out there doing exactly what Coach expects. You know, the only thing for me personally that's um that has them being alike is they're from Bucks County, and that's pretty much it. <laughs> Thanks, Josh. Then Daniel. Uh, let's go left side here. Hi guys, Janine Edwards, ESPN. Um, Coach had said after the game the other night that he had had a talk with you before, um, saying, hey, we've been here before, and if we didn't play great, if we didn't win, it didn't kill us. So he's talked to you guys about having that approach. That's kind of a different approach, actually, is you know not being afraid to fail because it's not gonna kill us. How did that theme and that approach from your coach impact you guys? What did you take away from that type of philosophy and any one of you or all of you can answer that let's start here with Ryan I think um, we've all heard it throughout our four years so it hasn't it wasn't just this this past game versus Iowa getting past his second game it's that's just the way coach has always always been uh, from my freshman year he's always coached that way and have no fear in losing as long as we go try uh, try to play Villanova basketball for 40 minutes um, then whatever the end result is, we'll be satisfied with it. But if we do that and we play Villanova basketball for 40 minutes, we know uh, we're going to be successful, and we know that uh, there's going to be a good result in the end. Josh, then Daniel, please. Yeah. Um, no. The one thing was Coach Wright. You know, he he's always he's always real with us. Um, sometimes he looks at um, you know, the worst case scenario, and you know the worst case scenario. You know, if we lose, you know, it's not going to kill us. <laughs> we're still going to be. You know, playing. You know, able to play basketball. Um, you know, we're going to be here, so we can. We looked at the worst case scenario, and we could handle the worst case scenario. And I think that was the biggest part, was just you know, this is the worst case scenario. We can handle this, so you know, let's move on and let's just play basketball. Let's not play, you know, to you know, to you know, get out the second round or anything like that. Like, like just go out there and play Villanova basketball. And that's kind of the approach he took. Yeah, and just.
Daniel? I mean, I mean, it just gives us a freer mind. Um, I mean, just what, what Josh said about the worst case scenario, I mean, the worst case scenario for us in the Big East tournament is we lost, we lose in the first round as the one seed. We already did that before. Um, the worst case scenario in the NCAA tournament is lose in the first round. We already did that before. Um, if we didn't get to the Sweet 16, we already did that before. So now it's just a different challenge. And I think just, you know, getting that out of our mind, we can just focus on playing Villanova basketball and keep it a 94 by 50 feet. Right side now. Ryan, what are some, some of the things about yourself that you can see in your coach? And were those some of the things that sort of drew you to, to him? Um, I think we have a lot of connections. Just uh, my mom, both my parents went to Villanova. His wife went to Villanova. And my mom and her lived on the same hall. Um, I think, like uh, Daniel said, we're from this, uh, basically the same town. We went to rival high schools. I played against his, uh, his younger brother. And um, he was the coach at the rival high school we played against. But, <coughs> excuse me, um, I don't know. I mean, I don't think I dress as well as him or anything. I mean, I don't know. I just, uh, I think I'm just on the court. And just, I think that's the way that he, he wants a Villanova basketball player to be. And he thinks that that's the way uh, that he wanted to be as a player. And he's, if he could still play, I think he would, would pick me as the player to play him. <laughs> Okay, stay on the right here. Mark Herman from Newsday in New York. Everyone wants to progress in the postseason. I would ask each player, what are you guys doing better now than you were at the beginning of the Big East tournament? Start with Daniel, then go to Josh and Ryan. I think um, our team defense has gotten a lot better. And um, that just goes, to, um, our younger guys, um, they're just stepping up, understanding our scouting report more, and they're just locking in more. And then, you know, guys like myself, Josh, Ryan, we're experienced and we've done this before. We just got to continue staying on ourselves to, you know, demand greatness of ourselves. And if we're doing it, the younger guys don't have an excuse not to do it because, you know, if, when they mess up, we could get on them, we could teach them, and they could respond. And then, you know, when they're on the bench watching the start the game off, they see these are how the starters are coming out, you know, committed to Villanova basketball, you know, defending and rebounding and sticking to the scouting report. So as soon as they get in the game, there's no excuse for them. Yeah, um, really just what Daniel said. Um, you know, it, what, Coach Wright really didn't talk too much to us about you know, on the offensive side. It was about defense, about you know, our, recommitting ourselves to our defensive you know, philosophy. Um, I think that second half of the scene Hall game, um, you know, defensively, uh -huh, is where we kind of picked it up a little bit. Uh, Phil Booth, Mikel Bridges came in, played outstanding minutes um, on the defensive end. Um, and that was the reason why we were able to kind of get back into that game because we committed ourselves to defense. Um, and then this moving, you know, obviously we had that heartbreak, uh, you know, at the end of that game. But just moving forward, we focused on defense, defending, you know, rebounding, doing, playing hard. Uh, we know, you know, off you know we're skilled offensively, uh, but you know, there's going to be days where our shots are falling and we shoot. Uh, what, Iowa, we shot like 70-something or 60-something percent in the second half. There's going to be games like that. But, you know, we're focusing on the games where we don't shoot the ball well, where, you know, we can't buy a basket, but we're defending, we're rebounding, we're, we're in, our game, in the game because of defense. And I think that's something that we're really picking up, you know, since the Big East tournament. Yes, sir. Um, I think we're starting the games off better. I think in the Big East tournament, we uh, – we struggled to start the games all strong, both offensively and defensively. We saw that we got down early against Seton Hall, but I think in the Asheville and the Iowa game, we all came out knowing the scouting report and executing offensively. So I think um, starting the games off uh, better is probably the one thing I would say that we've been getting better at, better at throughout these uh, last couple games. All right, guys, we're going to let you guys go. Cool. Appreciate your time today, and good luck. Thank you. Thank you.
Ladies and gentlemen, Coach Wright is on his way to the uh, interview room. When he gets here, we'll have him throw out an opening statement, then we'll take questions. And we'll get a microphone to you. Make sure you raise your hand, get that mic to you, and then uh, let us know who you are and what outlet you're with. Hey, Coach, how are you? Yes, sir. Thank you, Coach. Have a seat. All right, whenever you're ready, we'll... Uh, Welcome to Louisville. Thank you. Um, great to be here. Great to be in the Sweet 16. Nice to be in Louisville, not playing the Cardinals. Last time we were here, Yum Center was, uh, we had to go against the Cardinals. That wasn't, that wasn't a pretty thing. But uh, everybody here has been just uh, so friendly. And uh, Coach Patino let us use the, the practice facility over there. And uh, we just had a good practice. And we're, uh, we're ready to go. We'll get our, our open practice out here and um, taking on a great team. And this time of year, that's what you get, a very experienced, well-coached, disciplined, physically tough team. So we're, we're, we're fired up about it. Good deal. All right, let's start on the right side and the back, and then we'll work our way forward and over. Jim Womble, ESPN Louisville. Coach, talk about what you think of Louisville as a host city and your overall thoughts on the city, please. Well, you know, we, we've, we used to come here at the Big East, always loved it. Um, I, I made a joke, you, you, can, you can tell when you come, as you get into the airport, everybody you meet, um, college basketball is real important to them. You know, they, they know who you are, they know, they know the team. Um, and it, same thing when you get to the hotel. You, you just can sense in this city um, that everybody follows college basketball. Everybody loves college basketball. Uh, it's a perfect site for the NCAA tournament. Thanks, Coach. Now we'll stay on the right here and just go in, in the row here. One, two, three. Kyle Tucker, Courier Journal. Jay, uh, Ryan, I know you've talked about this some, but Ryan said that you know if you could still play, he thinks he would be the guy you would reincarnate yourself as, I guess, and that you, you view him as an extension of yourself and all those things. So it, it, what about him, I guess? What do you? What parts of yourself do you see in him, and, and maybe does of him does he see in you? I, I did play like him, but not as well. I, I was not as good a player. But the um, his competitiveness on every possession and in in everything he does, you know, from getting over a screen to uh, making the right play, diving on a loose ball, um, taking every defensive challenge personally. Um, taking responsibility for his teammates, t taking responsibility for the entire program. Um, I, I, I love everything about him. I, and I didn't, I didn't put that into him. He, he came in that way. And that's what really um, made him effective immediately as a freshman. And it's why we made him captain as a freshman. Mark Herman from Newsday. Uh, how how long have you known Coach Larinaga, and uh, you know what's what's that relationship like, and what is that three point drill that uh, yeah. he shared? He, uh, I met him from my Hofstra days when I was at Hofstra, and uh, um, Tom Pacora, my assistant, you know, was a New York guy, and I was learning the New York scene, the basketball scene. I, I was a Philly guy coming in there, and. Uh, Jim is very well respected in New York City basketball. You know, having been a Bronx guy and, and playing at Malloy for the legendary Coach Curran. So every time we re would recruit somebody, he was at Bowling Green, Hofstra Bowling Green were on the same level. We think we'd be in with somebody, and he'd come in there, and he had much stronger connections. But I'd always run into him. So we developed a relationship. And then as he went to George Mason, we went to Villanova, we went on. Uh, um, Nike trips together. Our wives became friendly, played golf together. We played golf together. And he's just a real friendly guy. So from our New York connection, we stayed in touch. And then we I shouldn't, we shared ideas. I, I don't know if I gave him anything. I don't think I did. But he, had, um, he, he, puts, uh, he, he gives his players red, yellow, and green in terms of how they are allowed to shoot. And it's a system. We don't use the colors, but I use the philosophy. And he's got, I stole a number of, there's a number of drills he gave me um, where you put um, time on the clock, how many three-pointers you can make on a time, in that time period. 
and then he, he keeps a record of all his players. So he has who has made the most, and Larkin has the most. No one on our team has broken Larkin's record, and we shared that with our guys. We've stolen a lot of drills. I don't think I told our guys I got a lot of them from Miami, except the one, the timed three-pointing drill, three-point shooting drill I did because I told the guys what Larkin made, and guys have tried to beat that. One more on the right, and then two here on the left. Uh, Joe Giuliano, Philadelphia Inquirer. Jay, uh, continuing on that tone, uh, you mentioned in the past that you hate coaching against your former assistants and your friends. Um, I got both. What, you got, what's uh, what's it going to be like tomorrow, and uh, and uh, you know how much do you have for, uh, respect you have for the program that he's built at Miami? Yeah, it, it, actually, when you get to the Sweet 16. Final eight, final four, that, that kind of goes away. I, I don't know why, you know, because um, you, you, you're so focused on what you do. You, it, you, you're so happy to be there. Um, and usually when you get to this point, it's, it's guys you know, you know. And I, I've learned that over the years. It's guys you either know or guys you've really looked up to, you know. And Jim is both. Um, I, I really have respect for the fact that when he was at Bowling Green, that was an outstanding program. I knew – how good that program was because we were always recruiting against them. I knew who he was getting. I knew their success. I knew the respect that New York City people had for them. Then he went to George Mason, did it again, and we played them in the NCAA tournament. They beat us. And, uh, and, and so, you know, we, we were becoming closer friends. And then he goes to Miami, and he does it again and does it the same way. He builds a team. He hired one of our former assistants. Um, and he, he, he does it with a team – family mentality and uh and and they uh they take great pride in playing the right way and and um and playing for the name on the front of their jersey he's done it that way everywhere he's been and i really respect that okay Teresa. Therese Walker, Associated Press. With that familiarity with him, he, he kind of mentioned that he looks and sees maybe mirror images, you know, between yeah. Miami and Villanova. Uh, does that make it easier preparing tomorrow night or, you know, with, because of the, the, the rosters? Is that the wild card in this situation? You know, I, that's going to be – it makes it a little easier to prepare in terms of the work you have to do because you, we do – we have a lot of similar philosophies. So when you're practicing uh, – the the second team can run the offense easily. They know what they're doing. Where it becomes different is you, we can't simulate the, the size and athleticism. And you definitely can't do it with your second team. So it, it, it's going to be interesting when you get to the game. Uh, are, are we prepared for the plays? And, and does the size and athleticism kind of smack us in the face when you, when you feel it and see it live? You know, that, that's, that's what we can't tell until we play. Janine? Coach, hi, Janine Edwards, ESPN. Um, can you give us two or three things about Miami that you think will be most challenging? And based on what you saw from their game against Wichita State the other night, how they gave up a 21-point lead, came back, what do you think they got out of that that will make them extra difficult for you guys? Let me start with that Wichita State game because it's something we share with our team and, and, um, and that we were very impressed with um, they, they started that game very focused and, and very prepared for an outstanding Wichita State team. Took the lead. Uh, Wichita State, great team, came back, took the lead. When they took the lead, you could see in their eyes no panic, uh, no concern, and you saw them step it up another level against a team that was on a run. If you do that any time, you're a good team. But when you do that in the NCAA tournament, when you fight against momentum in the NCAA tournament with no panic, momentum in the NCAA tournament is far greater than any other time during the year. The crowd got into it. Wichita State got into it. Miami never flinched, took back control of the game, and then methodically put them away. We, we told our guys, you you, you got to be wily veterans to be able to do that. And to give you three things that they do, I, Number one, their guard play. Um, McClellan and Rodriguez are outstanding. You've got two go one guard that can really score and create for the other, and, the and McClellan, one that is just an incredible scorer. When you, when you add Newton and Reed, you could actually see um, that when those two leave, Newton and Reed are going to be the same combo because Newton's creative and he can score like Rodriguez. 
Reed is incredibly athletic, can shoot it. But this year, you got four of them together. It's not just the two. It's the four of them that are outstanding. And then you take their forwards who play the role of screening for them, rebounding extremely well. But also, if you spend too much attention on those guards, those guys can score. It's a really unique team. That's what makes them a great team. All right, last question here. C.L. Brown with ESPN.com. I have a two-part question about Chris Jenkins. Uh, one, he just described himself coming out of high school as, as a fat kid uh, and, and that you had a vision for him that you kind of put in front of him. I was wondering if you could elaborate on what that vision was. And the second part is, uh, how do you feel like he makes kind of everything work in terms of being a, a – a four guy who can play somebody bigger defensively and take advantage offensively. Well, I'm glad he said that, that he was a fat kid. I would never say that about anybody. But he was, um, he was, he had a lot more mass than he should have had on that bone structure. And when we watched him in high school, we saw an outstanding basketball player, an outstanding leader, and, and an outstanding scorer that uh, took his team to a championship and was the player of the year in Washington, D.C. And we're looking at him and we're saying, the only thing negative about this kid is that he's overweight. That's it. So we, we, we were recruiting um, his teammate, Nate Britt, and his brother. So we brought them both up together, but we were recruiting Nate. And we said to Chris, we would love to have you if you would really want to come in here and get into shape and, and cut your body fat because we think if you did that, you could be an incredible basketball player. But if you don't, you can't really play at this level. And we didn't really make, we weren't real aggressive about that. We just said that was reality. And he became very interested in us. And once we saw that he wanted that, we said we got something special here. And if you could imagine coming into college and as a freshman in college having to cut out sweets, cut out juice, not eat candy. I mean, I followed him into it. We ate dinner one time. We went out to dinner as a team, and we came out of the restaurant, and I saw him sneak into a drugstore, and I followed him in behind him and got behind us and to see what he would buy. We ate a nice, healthy dinner, and then he went in and bought candy bars and juice, and then I came in behind him in the line, and he turned around and just said, oh, no, and I, I made him give it back. But, I mean, to go through that in college is not easy. And... And he, we have so much respect for him for doing that. And what he gives us is a guy that can play any position on the floor, and now he, he's learning how to play as a conditioned athlete. There's one thing to get conditioned, but if you played your whole way as an unconditioned athlete, that, that's how you play. Now he's learning how to play like a conditioned athlete, and he can play anywhere on the floor. So he, he's a mismatch nightmare for the opponent, but he's also a, a valuable um, resourceful player for us that can play any position. Coach, we're going to have to wrap it up. Appreciate your time. Good, see you, buddy. Good luck. Thank you, guys.
Coach Turgeon is on his way to the interview room. A half hour. So Maryland, you ask him for Maryland, 2 to 2.30. So here in about, here in a minute it'll be open, 2 to 2.30. Coach, get settled here. We'll ask him for an opening statement to get us started, and then we'll open it up to questions. Please raise your hand. We'll get a microphone to you, and then uh, we'll start with questions for Coach. But, Coach, welcome to Louisville. Thank you. It's practice. It's girls' practice. Both. Yeah. Um, obviously, we're excited to be here. It's been a, so, it's been a, a crazy week for us. Flew home Monday and came in here this morning, but we're – Super excited to be a part of the Sweet 16 and, and um, you know, playing the number one overall seed in the tournament, Kansas, tomorrow, tomorrow night. So it should be a lot of fun and get back on the East Coast uh, to play, which, which will be fun. Um, but we're excited. The guys are fired up and ready to play. Good deal. Thank you very much. Let's start in the back here. CL. Mark CL Brown with ESPN.com. Can you kind of summarize what Rashid Suleiman has, has meant to this team from a leadership perspective, uh, especially in the postseason? Well, his leadership's been great all year. Um, with his personality, he didn't really wait to start leading. Um, he started doing it right away. And, and our team needed it. Um, and uh, really vocal early leadership-wise. As the season went on, he became a much better practice player. Um, and, and led that way also. But uh, obviously he has a little bit of experience in this tournament. Um, uh, his freshman year, I think they went to the lead eight at, at Duke. So he, he has a good feel for it. And he's been good. The guys really respect him. Obviously he was tremendous on Sunday night uh, when we made our run. He was great defensively, you know, made some nice plays offensively. So he's been terrific. He's been everything and more than I was expecting. And um, so I'm happy for him. Let's go on the right side and the back, and then we'll come here to the left side. Jim Womble, ESPN Louisville. Coach, talk about what you think of Louisville as a host city and your overall thoughts on the city. Well, we just landed. So um, I've seen the hotel and, and a bus. Uh, but no, it's a basketball town. Um, so we're excited about that. I, I love the location of the, of the Yum Center and all the hotels down here. It'll be, it'll be great for the fans. Um, I think a lot of people will just be able to walk to the games, uh, which should be a lot of fun. Don Marcus from Baltimore Sun. Uh, Mark, can you talk about the other night when you had that run in the second half? As a coach, do you, do you want to see, I mean, do you see more of that um, happening in, in a game like this because of the way Kansas plays? And also, uh, does your team sometimes play up and down to the level of competition? So in the case of Kansas, it could be a, a good thing that they, they, they play up to the competition. Don, how can you ask that question? We've been together all year. You know we, we've done that all year. But um, <clears throat> I'm just glad we had that run. You know, we, we were really tight. And um, uh, finally, we broke loose. Our defense got us going. So um, I just think this time of year, everybody's dialed in and ready to play. And, and uh, I expect Kansas to play well and I expect us to play well. Should be a, should be a great game, but our, our guys will be they're fired up because they have a lot of respect for Kansas, and they are the, the best team in the tournament, so that gets our attention. Back here in the green. <clears throat> Mark Fahey Gregorian, Kansas City Star. I, I noticed the other day you, you mentioned that you hate to have to play Kansas. I, I, the reason's obvious, of course, but I wonder if you could elaborate a, a little bit on what it's like for you to play KU. And then if you can answer this afterwards, just compare 85 and 2015 as World Series events. <laughs> That's a lot of questions. Okay, um, <laughs> first of all, um, 
The Kansas thing's not that weird to me anymore or unique. It was a little bit that way the first time uh, we played. But being a Texas A&M, we played them a lot, and uh, you, you get used to it. So uh, <clears throat> I'd rather play them in a national championship game than a Sweet 16 game, but here we are. Uh, so we'll, we'll play it. But um, it is what it is, and it's 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 – as Bill can tell you, when he plays Oklahoma State, which he's done a lot, it's probably not unique or weird to him anymore. He just does it. So it's kind of the way I feel about this game. Um, as far as the World Series go, um, you know, I grew up just a diehard Royals fan, Chiefs fan, Kansas fan. But uh, uh, I was lucky enough to be in the 85 uh, building when they won it. Uh, game seven was uh, a blowout. And uh, that was fun. Uh, and this year, I've kind of brainwashed my kids into being diehard Royals fans, and, and uh, so we got to be there at Game Five in New York, which was I took my two boys, and uh, it was a lot of fun. You know, we got by the by the end of the game, we were on the dugout basically. We were in the front row um, of the dugout because the Mets fans started to leave. So uh, it was a special night. It was you know to do that with my two boys and, and watch the Royals. I literally can't go to bed at night till I get a Royals score. Um, unless they're playing away on the West Coast and it gets pretty hard. But, uh, yeah, it's something I follow pretty closely. I'm going to stay here in the front and then go three over here, and then we'll come to the right side. Mark, uh, Blair Kirkhoff with the Kansas City hey, Star. Blair. Mark, uh, can you just take us through your recruiting battle to get to Kansas out of high school for you? Oh, my recruiting battle? Yeah, the recruiting battle for Mark Turgeon Services. Yeah, I think I was – I was down on my knees begging Coach Brown to take me. I think that's really what it came down to, or my, my dad was doing that. So, you know, I got very lucky. Um, there was a coaching change. The coach happened to be 5'11", like me. And, um, and thank God they had 15 scholarships back then. You know, now we only have 13, so I probably wouldn't have been on the team. But um, it all worked out, and um, it was a one-year deal. It's like, hey, you got, you got one shot, and if you don't, doesn't work out you won't be here next year so it worked out and you know I talked to coach Brown this week and um, you know I just changed my life obviously for the better so I was, I was very fortunate and I played on a lot of great teams too so it was a lot of fun. Ted started, Ted started it yeah and um, I recruited KU I went to their camps and go to their games and um, yeah, I recruited them. So uh, in the end, my high school coach, Coach Meske, really helped set up a meeting, and and I was pretty, I was pretty confident at that age, uh, to say the least, um, when I met with Coach Brown. Right here. Bob Lutz, Wichita Eagle. That's one leap of faith. Uh, what about the other one that when Jim Shouse called you and and wanted to hire you after only two seasons at Jacksonville State and yeah. bring you to Wichita State? What were those years like for you as a coach? Yeah. Well, and I had a losing record at Jacksonville State. My second year we won. Um, and I just remember waking up that morning in Jacksonville and um, I had one more player to get. And I said, oh, by the way, I got a phone interview with Jim Schaus from Wichita State today. I said, I have no shot. I said, but um, I'm going to talk to him about 9 o'clock. And by 10 o'clock, I think I had the job. We were on the phone for about an hour and then um, went over to Atlanta. And so Jim... You know, it was great. Worked out great for me. Um, was able to go home. Um, we loved being in Wichita. Uh, we had we had KU fans. We had Wichita State fans. We had we became friends with some K State fans uh, while we were there, and it was a big part of our life. Uh, two of my kids were born in Wichita, and uh, I'm really proud of uh, what we did at Wichita. And it's I'm even more proud of what Greg's done with it. <clears throat> Don't go to sleep at night unless I get a Wichita State score. Um, I was, was following him closely last week, but uh, really proud of that program, what Jim and I were able to do, Don Beggs, to build that thing up and, and be a part of a Sweet 16 10 years ago. Um, when, when I took the job, if someone was walking in the office, someone couldn't be going out of it. It was that narrow. It was, so the facilities weren't great, and we put a lot into it. I couldn't show recruits the locker room on the visit. There was too many cockroaches down there. Um, so. That thing's come a long ways, and playing a Final Four and, and win 28, 30 games every year, is, is, it's amazing. One more here on the left, then we'll hit the right side. <clears throat> Hi, Coach. Janine Edwards, hey, ESPN. Janine. How are you? Good to Doing see you. Great. You too. Um, you had said to your team before Saturday night's game, we're going to have a game where shots are not going to fall. Yeah. And so you experienced that. What were some of the things your players were saying to you in the huddles during the timeouts 
when they were going through that rocky patch in that game. And how do you think that helped them and helped prepare them for tomorrow? Well, I'm glad I said that to them. Um, it, but that's the way we played all year. We've been a little inconsistent. And um, during the timeouts, we just kept talking about our defense because our defense was terrific. Um, and that was a hard matchup for us. They had a lot of little guards, guys that we had to chase. And um, our guys were just terrific. And then I told a really bad Larry Brown joke um, about the 12-minute timeout, and I think the score was tied, and it really loosened us up. And I can't say. But Coach Brown knows, and I told him about it, and our guys know, and um, can't be repeated. And we just relaxed. It was amazing. But I was desperate. I was like, we're, 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 I felt like we were clearly better than Hawaii. We just had to relax and play. And, and we finally did, and we went on a 14-0 run. But um, it was just trying to get the guys to loosen up a little bit. Do two in front here on the right, and then go to Tim in the back. Sam Davis, KJHK Lawrence. Saw you talking to Bob Davis during practice time. What's your relationship with him like? Really not a big fan of Bob's, to be honest with you. <laughs> no, I tell you what, it's, um, it goes, time goes fast. And, you know, I grew up with Max Falkenstein, first of all. My dad used to play golf with him. Max taught me a few curse words I never knew before, um, you know, back in the day. But... Uh, it is amazing how quickly it's gone. I think Bob was there my sophomore year was his first year um, at Kansas, and then I hear he's retiring. Um, it goes way too fast, and I watch, watch his son Steven grow up and, and be a part of all of it. So happy for him. He can go out on his terms. He's been great. He's been lucky. He's got to call a lot of victories, um, Final Fours, National Championships. Uh, he's had a nice run. So we had a great relationship. I'm happy for him, and uh, it's, he's had a great career. Mark with Pony Wichita Eagle. Can you talk about Mel a little bit? Um, how much has has he had to do with you guys getting the Sweet 16 and just talking about his development? And you talked about your team having inconsistent shots. Yeah. He's had some of those. But as a point guard, which you know well, can yeah. you talk about his point guard development? Yeah, not well, just shooting. The only thing I can say about Mel is he's a winner. The, the year before we, we got Mel, we were 17 and 15. And I think we're 55 and 15 cents or something like that. So. He's a pretty good player. Um, he's really gotten better at his point guard play. His assists are up. His turnovers are down. His decision making's better. Um, he's defensively, he's come a long ways for us in the last year. Uh, he just hadn't shot the ball like he did his freshman year. He really shot it well and and uh, was very relaxed. A lot more pressure on him this year. But um, he's a tremendous player. Knows how to score in a variety of different ways. So. Um, just try not to put too much on him. Just try to get him to relax and trust his teammates a little bit more and, and just run the system. So he, he's got a good feel for it. No, just preseason player of the year. We had a lot of expectations. It was all new for us uh, at Maryland this year. I mean, we had it 10, 12 years ago, but it was new. So, uh, But he's had a terrific year. I mean, he was second team all league and at 24 and I think 19 in the two games out in Spokane, so he's had a terrific year. You have one, maybe two. Let's start right here. Tim Sullivan, Louisville Courier Journal. Uh, Mark, last year there were Duke and uh, Kentucky in the Final Four with freshman dominated teams. This regional is very heavy on experience. Yeah. Did you see what happened last year as an anomaly, and what is the benefit of experience in this tournament? Well, experience is huge, um, and that's I, I, lo I love that. There's seniors doing what they're doing this year. Um, you know, Suleiman for us, Jake Lehman decided to come back. He's had a great year. Perry, Perry Ellis, year he's having for Kansas in, in our game. So um, it's great because it hopefully it keep kids around, help them make good decisions and make college basketball better. Uh, was last year an anomaly? Um, could be. Now next year, Kentucky and Duke and Michigan State are putting together some really good young recruiting classes. Uh, they could probably do some great things next year. But I think it's great for college basketball that there's a lot of upperclassmen doing well, and it's more about them uh, this year than it is about the freshmen. Uh, I think it's great for our game. Squeeze one more in here. Uh, Gary Graves, Associated Press. Coach, if you, if, what do you like about your inside game and how well you think it, it compares to, to Kansas' game? Well, um, I have good bigs. <clears throat> they continue to get better. I think Diamond Stone and Robert Carter have really gotten better defensively as years has gone on. They'll be challenged tomorrow night, obviously. Uh, DeMonte Dodds, a, a young man we have a lot of confidence in, def great defender, smart defender, 
good ball screen defender. We have to be great in ball screen defense tomorrow night. All three of those guys are pretty good. And, and then Checo hasn't played a lot, but Checo might see some time tomorrow night too. Gives us a little more depth. So um, worry about Kansas speed. Their they're big guys are a little bit faster than ours. Um, and they're, you know, I, I worry a little bit about their speed. So uh, we, we've worked on some things to try to prepare our guys. But we have good bigs. They have good bigs. Should be a great matchup. Coach, we've got to let you go. Okay. Thanks for Thank your time. You. Good luck. Thank you. Welcome. How are you? Good, good. Thank you. Okay, we've got the Terps here. We'll begin with questions. We'll start right here on the left. We got one on the right. Mellow. 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 Uh, probably the Wichita Eagle. Can you talk about uh, this season? Uh, their coach was talking about maybe some of the preseason pressure might have kind of put a little more pressure on you and there's expectations. Did you feel that? And is that because you're not shooting as well this year as you did last year? Is that part of it, or is just uh, what, do you, what do you think about what happened? Or uh, it worked. Yeah, uh, I guess I felt a little pressure uh, after having a good season last year uh, as far as shooting and uh, just coming in this year and being you know one of the top teams. Everyone put a lot of put a lot of weight on me because you know I was one of the key returners coming back from next year's team, and we had some additional players as well. And uh, this year I had to be a leader on the team, and so just just for me to go through all that, and, and I guess the shooting slump, everyone will say I struggled, but I mean we still we still won some games and we lost some, but I mean I mean it's basketball, so things happen, and I wouldn't call it struggling; I just call it growing pains, and you know I got better from it, I learned from it. Over here on the right. Um, Mark Tracy from the New York Times. Mel, I wanted to tackle the same thing from the opposite angle, which is that uh, the past week has seen a bunch of uh, kind of exciting buzzer beaters from other teams and didn't want people to forget about yours uh, against Wisconsin in January. Um, I guess for those of us who haven't hit a game-winning buzzer beater, um, I was wondering if you could take us through kind of both what's going through your mind when that happens, when you know the shot's going in, i.e. If, if you know it's going in before it actually goes in, and also how in practice, if there's a way you can kind of simulate those circumstances for yourself. Uh, I don't know if the shot's going in or not. I know if I'm going to take the shot. Uh, I practice it every day, um, pre-shoot pre around, uh, even over the summer, I practice that shot, just a rhythm up three. But uh, I mean, I know I was going to take a three when uh, Coach Turgeon didn't call a timeout. I just wanted to get clo get close enough and get an, uh, enough space in order to take the shot and it went in. Stay over on the right and then to the left here. Pete Gilbert with WBAL TV. For both of you guys, certainly out there today to shoot around, look like you're having a lot of fun. This year at times, it doesn't look like it's been a whole lot of fun. It's been kind of a grind. The fact that maybe now you're the underdog, you know, the, the weight of expectation seems gone. Can you guys just be free and be yourselves more so than you were earlier this year? Rashid first and then Melo. Um, you know, it's, it, at the end of the day, you know, we're playing a game that we love. So uh, with all the pressure that, you know, maybe – uh, outside sources are putting on us, you know, um, I think it kind of, you know, lingered in our locker room for a little bit for the course of the season. But, uh, you know, we just got back to just having fun, playing the game that we love. And, you know, um, you know, being a part of the NCAA tournament is a once-in-a-lifetime thing. So we're just enjoying every part of it. Of course, we're going to compete. And every time we play on the game, playing the game, we're going to try to win. 
But I think, uh, you know, coach just being loose like that and just getting back to the basics and telling us, you know, just go out there and have fun, play for the name on the front of the jersey and play for each other. Um, and if you do those things, you know, regardless of the outcome, you know, we're still winners. So, uh, you know, um, that's just been our mindset going into this tournament. And, uh, you know, like I said, you know, we're one of 16 teams left. So we just want to enjoy enjoy the ride as much as we can. Good enough. Well, uh, <laughs> Rasheed pretty much said, said everything. Uh, the biggest thing for us was just enjoy the moment. There are the whole season, we was just, you know, we had a lot going on and we was losing, winning. Uh, our rankings dropped, but uh, we just forgot how to have fun. And uh, I say after we played uh, Michigan and we won, we just learned how to have fun again and just to love each other and, and just know that, you know, to enjoy the moment because, you know, some, certain players might not be with us next year and we just want to have fun with the, the group of guys we have here. All right, three on the left side here coming up. Uh, this is for uh, Rashid, uh, right here. Oh, sorry. Uh, Ken Corbett from the Topeka, Kansas Capital Journal. Do you see a lot of similarities between your backcourt and Kansas, or are there more differences? Um, you know, uh, Kansas has one of the top backcourts in the country. Um, you know, with, with Devontae Graham, Frank Mason, and then, you you know, you can throw in uh, Green and, and Wayne Selden in, in there, depending on the lineup. Um, you know, they have a lot of versatility. Um, they can really shoot the ball, they can really put pressure on the defense by getting in the lane. And, um, you know, looking at us, we feel we're very confident in our backcourt as well um, with myself, Melo, um, you know, Jalen Brantley off the bench, uh, Jared Niggins. Um, you know, we feel we can do a lot of similar things. You know, it's going to be a tough matchup. Um, but at the same time, you know, we love competition. So, um, you know, it's going to be, you know, our backcourt versus their backcourt, our, our team versus their team at the end of the day. So we're just going to go out there and try to compete to the best of our abilities. and. Um, you know, we'll see what happens. Hi, guys. Janine Edwards, ESPN. Um, if you could both answer this, um, start with you, Rashid. Does Coach really take your cell phones away? <laughs> <laughs> and and how, how do you celebrate if he does take your cell phones, and why does he take your cell phones? Yeah, uh, he, he actually does, which was, you know, probably hurt our hearts, you know, especially being, you know, college kids. Um, but at the same time, we, we just wanted to – um, understand that this moment is, is an important moment, and uh, we didn't want any distractions. And, um, you know, he talked to the older guys, myself, Jake Lehman, and Robert Carter, just to kind of, you know, lay, lay the ground rules to us first and see how we would receive it. And, you know, it was kind of hard to give up, but uh, we all agreed with him at the same time because, you know, um, like I said, it's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. So, uh, you know, taking those phones and just, you know, having the – uh, less distractions, um, extra hours of sleep that we may have from not having those phones. Um, I f we felt that it was a, an important step for us uh, heading into the tournament just to make sure that everyone was on the same page and to ensure that um, everyone was getting uh, the much needed rest that, that uh, we needed to, to compete at a high level. Uh, he normally takes them around you know, 10 o'clock. So uh, right after our team dinner, um, you know, he'll collect them and, uh, you know, normally we have a, a extra hour just to, you know, kind of relax before, you know, we have our, our curfew. So, uh, you know, it's been it's been good to us so far. Um, like I said, it, it probably hurts, but at the same time, uh, you know, uh, it's, it's been successful. So that's one of the, the necessary sacrifices that we need uh, that we needed to, to be where we are today. So um, we appreciate it. Okay. Stay here in front. Uh, Rishi, this is Rick Plumley, which time I go. I asked Mel about the shooting. And I don't mean to be picking on that, but as a point guard, of course, there's a lot more to it than the shooting. Can you just talk about his development as a point guard this year, the whole the whole picture, the whole thing? Yeah, um, you know, just Melo's maturation process this year, I mean, he, he's grown a lot in my eyes. You know, from the first time I, I, I came on campus, you know, he's naturally a more quiet, quieter kid. And, um, you know, Coach kind of challenged me to challenge him to be more vocal, um, to step into that leadership role. And, you know, at the end of the day, he's only a sophomore, and that's a big task for any sophomore. Um, but, you know, he's handled it with a lot of grace. He's, he's an amazing talent. And, um, you know, just, just as I admire him because uh, with, with all the weight on his shoulders, the, the humility he has and uh, the humble um, and his hungry nature, you know, he's the first one in the gym, last one to leave. Um, it's, it's really been impressive. And, um, you know, just now seeing where he has from the beginning of the year, um, he's more vocal. Um, he, he's, uh, you know, getting on people when he needs to, putting his arm around people when he needs to. And he's just, you know, being the total package of a point guard. You know, he can score the ball with the best of them. He can, you know, penetrate and find anyone uh, um, who's open. And at the end of the day, he, he leads the team. And, and he's the main, one of the main reasons why um, our team is uh, 
where we are today. Let's go on the right side in the back and then to the second to the last row. Mark Herman from Newsday in New York. Rashid, your coach is just in here, and like any coach, he's, he's very happy that uh, there are upperclassmen in, in this tournament this year. What, is, what do you get out of it? What, what's, what have these four years been like for you? Why, why stay? Um, <laughs> well, me personally, my four years have been an a, a up and down roller coaster. But, uh, you, know, uh, you know, being here in Maryland at, for my last year, um, you know, knowing Coach Mark Turgeon for a very long time since I was in seventh grade, um, you know, it's, it's been a blessing, you know, personally. Um, and, uh, you know, college is, is a great place. You know, it's a place where you can grow, um, you can, you know, mature um, your game on, for your game on and off the court. Um, and, uh, you know, especially lately, you know, with a lot of kids who are younger, um, a lot of talented kids who, you know, take the spotlight, which is fine. But, uh, you know, it's kind of, it's kind of neat to see, you know, this year that the, the older guys are, are kind of, you know, um, dominating or, or um, you know, showing that, you know, we can play too. So uh, <laughs> it's been a unique year, especially these, uh, these past couple of years with, you know, a lot of one and dones or whatever like that. But, um, you know, it shows that, you know, staying in college and, and maturing and, and getting better on and off the court um, can, can, be, can have a lot of benefits as well um, in your maturation process as a human being. So. Um, me personally, um, I, I, I loved uh, college, and um, I think I needed every year um, to be where I am today. And um, uh, I'm 100% happy with, with my decision to stay. Right side. Uh, Gary Graves, Associated Press. Uh, for Mello, when you have a game like Sunday uh, uh, from, from three-point range, did, how frustrating can it be I mean, when you're supposed to have a short memory about things like that, but how frustrating was that and how much did that kind of help you? And when you look at the box score, how quickly do you kind of put that behind you? Uh, I don't worry about missed shots. I just keep shooting them. I know Coach Turchin sure. you know, wouldn't <laughs> agree with me to keep shooting threes when I'm off, but uh, I mean, he knows me by now for the past two years. I'm a confident player. and. You know, if I miss one, I'm gonna shoot the next one. It's, like you said, it's supposed to be a short memory. And uh, when you're having fun, you don't worry about the misses. You just go out there and keep shooting them and do whatever it takes to help you take one. Time for one more. <laughs> David Lawrence, Kansas Radio. You guys are long and a little longer than Kansas at a couple positions, which I'm guessing has been the case throughout the year. Can you talk about the advantages of that or any disadvantages as far as taking care of the ball against smaller guards and even inside. Rashid first, please. Um, yeah, uh, we're, we're blessed and we have the luxury to have a lot of, you know, um, tall athletic players. Um, you know, even our guards, you know, stand at 6'5", six, 6'7". Six, um, you know, Jake, our starting three men is 6'9". Um, you know, I definitely think it can be an advantage, but at the same time, you know, uh, Kansas can, you know, have some advantages as well by going small, um, you know, increasing the tempo and you know I think we have the versatility to you know go, go, both go big and small as well and um, I think it's just going to come down to how each team executes their game plan um, you know it's just going to be a, a heavyweight battle between two great teams between two great coaches and you know I'm sure they have a great game plan for us and I think we have a great game plan for them but you know essentially it's going to come down to how um, each team can come together and, and execute those game plans when, when it matters most in, in a crucial game. Mello? Yeah I don't think the the length, length would bother them. Um, they're a great team. And just like length wouldn't bother us, we're both great teams. And we just want to go out there and both play hard. And that's pretty much it. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, thanks for your time today. Thank Good you luck. for having us.
Kansas student athletes are on their way down to the media, the interview room. All right, guys get settled here. We'll have questions. Uh, get a microphone to you right in the back row on the right. We'll get started. Tim Sullivan, Louisville Courier Journal. For both players, it, it, from a distance, it would appear that Kansas has better success with veteran teams than one and dones. Do you think that's true? And if so, what are the reasons? Jamari, then Devontae, please. Uh, I just feel from, from this team, uh, we just got guys that are, that are hungry. And uh, we know how it feels to take losses and uh, be just a little bit more focused. And uh, that's probably about it. We just got a little bit more experience being out here and we just know how it feels to go out there. And when you, when you take a, a loss, it sits in the back of your mind and you want to do anything you can to make sure it don't, ha don't happen again. I think what he said kind of, you know, answers the question perfectly. You know. You Older guys, older guys have that mentality. Uh, they've been here before, and they don't like that feeling of losing. So, you know, they kind of put that heart out on the line more than a one and done kid would. And um, I think, I think the guys are just hungrier. Questions for the Jayhawks, right here in the second to last row, left. Hi, guys. Janine Edwards, ESPN. Um, we see a lot of different styles, coaching styles. We've got Mark Turgeon, who takes his players' cell phones away at night, and we've got Jim Laranega, who's having his Miami team playing baseball last night. How would you describe Coach Self and his approach with you guys and his philosophy and what he's like to be around? No, Devontae, then Jamari. Um, I think he's, this year especially, he's been letting us be more free, you know, um, putting a lot of responsibility on us. Uh, treating us like adults, um, just you know, he's giving us that freedom, but we can't we can't abuse it. You know, he's allowing us to to do things whatever we want to do, especially on the court. You know, playing free and, and however we want to. So he just expects us to be adults and, and treat us like that. So same, I don't know, same as him. And we went to the uh, Kentucky Derby yesterday and visited that, which was nice for us. Yeah. Oh, that was fun. It was great, great experience. You know, you did get to see historic stuff like that, so it was nice. Uh, Jonathan Littner with the Courier Journal here in Louisville. I was going to ask you guys about going to Churchill Downs. For either of you all, have you, have you watched the Kentucky Derby before? Or did you, you did know much about it? Um, me myself, I, I didn't follow. I'm I'm not big on horse racing, and, but it was still a good experience to go out there and then see some of the tradition and, and just be a part of something like that. I know it's, uh, it's big, especially here. So um, but it was good to go out there and learn a little bit about it. Devontae? Uh, yeah, same. I'm not a big horse racing guy, but, you know, you hear about it all the time. You know, I've never actually watched one, uh, but being out there, it was, a, it was a great experience. Questions for the Jayhawks? Did you meet any horses? <laughs> Did you see any horses up close, or just were you just in the building? Were you in the museum? Uh, we were just in. We were just there. There weren't any horses there, unfortunately. So. Will you watch the Derby this year because of that? I might. I might. <laughs> <laughs> Depends on what I'm doing. <laughs> on the far right side here. That's for both Devontae and Jamari, I, I wonder if you mentioned this, Devontae, in the Big 12 tournament, that Coach Self's ability to sort of play mind games with you guys, and it, whether it's psychological or inspirational. I just wonder if you could describe a little bit of, of, of how he works with you in terms of trying to keep you motivated one way or another. Mm -hmm. Devontae. Uh, it's hard to explain, the, like, the mind games that he does, but 
uh, <clears throat> you know, last year as a freshman, he would he would do it. He does it to the freshman a lot. You know, you don't understand it as a freshman, but you know, like me, Mari, Frank, Wayne, we we understand what he's trying to like imply. Sometimes uh, it's kind of hard to explain. I, don't, I can't even. I don't even know how to explain it. Uh, same. <laughs> <laughs> Could you please expand on that? No. I'm uh, I think I could give you an example of one. Uh, it's practice, and uh, I probably I probably mess up or something, and uh, he would say something to push my buttons, and I go harder, and then he say, "Hey, so you think you went harder now that I got onto you?" And then if your if your answer is like, uh, "Yeah." He said, so why should I have to get on to you to, to go hard? You should go like that all the time. So just that's an example of something that he might do to play a mind game with you. Any more questions for the Jayhawks? Not well, okay. Tim in the back on the right. Following up on the experience angle, what kinds of things can a coach ask of a veteran team that he can't ask if, if it's a lot of freshmen? What do you understand that maybe younger players don't for, for both players? Jamari, then Devontae. Um, I guess just to be more focused and more accountable. Uh, we know what, what a coach expects from us a little bit more. Um, we've, we've been put under pressure situations before, um, and we're just ready. So um, I guess that's the difference, I guess. Uh, maturity is definitely another thing that a freshman wouldn't have. It's, much as a junior or somebody like that, if they're in a situation, you know, uh, talking trash situations and stuff like that, just to be mature about the whole thing. That's a, another example. Right here on the left. Gary Graves, <clears throat> excuse me, Associated Press. Um, for Jamar in particular, I guess, what, what does it mean to, to be in the Sweet 16 after, I guess it's been, what, three years now since, you, since you've been there? And, and how are you appreciating this experience? Um, it's just a great, great feeling to be able to get back here. Uh, these last couple of years, we've been bounced a little bit early, and uh, it's definitely left, left a bad taste in our mouth um, as a team. Uh, we're just more focused. Um, every possession matters. Uh, we're just more in tune. Uh, I guess more of a tight knit group, and uh, that's pretty much it. We're just living in the moment. We know any any day could be our last our last day playing. So uh, it's just. Just everything's more magnified. A question here on the left side. Devon, oh, Whitney Harding, WHAS here in Louisville. Devante, the second half of the Big 12 schedule, I mean, you guys really hit a stride. A lot of that, you stepping up, becoming more of a leader. When did that kind of role, when did you really accept that role and how did it help the team? Um, it was, we had a meeting with Coach, uh, four of the starters, me, Frank, Wayne, and Perry, uh, because we didn't really know who our uh, – Fifth spot would be uh, it would kept shifting back and forth between guys and and coaches came up and, and was talking to us about how we all needed to lead in our own way. We were looking for a leader. We didn't have a leader early in the season, but we were trying to pick out one leader, which wasn't working for us, you know, because not one person can really lead this team. And we do a good job of having multiple leaders uh, just do their lead in their own ways. And I think that that meeting really kind of helped me uh, after. After that. Okay. Right. Greg Mengelt, CNHI. Is there anything in particular about Maryland that's uh, concerning to you? Either one. Um, they're a great group. Uh, one through five, they can score the ball. Um, they do a great job with their guards of, of getting shots. Uh, Melo is pretty good coming off the ball screen, so we got to. We got to shrink the floor and help out on him. And uh, we just got to make it tough on them to score. We just got to play physical. And uh, that's what's, what's got us here. And we just got to continue to do that. Devontae, anything else? Uh, I think what he said with the ball screen, uh, we just got to um, you know, shrink the floor, especially when he's coming off ball screens, because he's good at getting in the paint and finishing and uh, dropping it off to his big man. So ball screen defense uh, definitely be a big part of the game for us. Time for one more. We're good? Oh, Janine. Thank you. Um, Devonte, you had said after your game the other night that 
Perry, who doesn't get a lot of fanfare, you called him the key to your team. Tell us some of the things that he does that don't show up on the stat sheet. What's it like being out there on the floor with him? Uh, one thing, I mean, he just stretches the defense. Um, you know, if when he's at the four, especially, he, uh, you got you to gotta respect this three-point shot. So it kind of keeps the big guy out of the paint, which causes driving lanes for me, Frank, and Wayne. And uh, we do a good job of kind of exploiting that uh, and, getting, and getting into the lane and trying to make plays for each other. So I think that's one of the biggest things that he does that goes unnoticed. Okay. Anything else? Nothing else? We're going to let these guys go. Thanks for your time. Good luck. Kansas locker room is open until 3. Coach Self's on his way down. Okay, so we welcome Coach into the interview room. Uh, please raise your hands if you have a questions. We're going to lead it off with an opening statement from the coach, if he doesn't mind. Welcome to Louisville. Well, we're excited to be in Louisville, and Louisville, That's I right. guess, is the correct way to pronounce it. Uh, uh, but uh, certainly our team is excited to be here, and I haven't had a chance to see the inside of the building yet, but I'm really excited to get out there and see the Yum Center and, and uh, 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 really grateful for the opportunity and certainly looking forward to playing a terrific Maryland team tomorrow. Thanks, Coach. Start over on the right side. Uh, Coach, uh, excuse me, Jim Womble, ESPN Louisville. Can you, you talk about uh, what uh, Louisville is as a host city and uh, what do you think of the city overall? Well, I haven't been here that often. I, we, we played here when I was uh, in college, and then I coached here when I was assistant at Okie State. Uh, and I've been to the Derby uh, a couple of times, and, and so uh, that's about been my only uh, experiences here in the city. But but uh, uh, people here are nice, very friendly, and and certainly uh, uh, the the convenience of having the the, uh, the hotels and everything right here close to the Yum Center I think is great. And and uh, and last night we were able to take our guys to Churchill Downs for for dinner, so that was a special deal for our, our fellas too. So. Uh, uh, I think, you know, as long as we play well, I think I'll really, really, really enjoy this place. <laughs> yeah, let's go to the middle aisle here on the right. Coach Trick Hernandez, Comcast Sportsnet, NBC. Uh, I know you played against Mark Turgeon in college. You also coached him. Mm -hmm. uh, what are your recollections of him as a player, and what do you know you're going to get from a Mark Turgeon coach team? Well, you know, Turge was a good player. You know, he wasn't very big, uh, but, but he got about all the talent he had out of that five-foot 10, 160 pound frame you possibly could. Uh, uh, and, and, you know, I, I did play against Turge a couple of years. Uh, uh, you know, our, our program wasn't quite at the elite level that Kansas's was. So, you know, he definitely won a couple more than we did uh, uh, when I played, but I but, but, uh, had a chance to coach against him, you know, when he was at A&M. And, and, and uh, his teams are sound. Uh, they're, he, he's very clever uh, in how they, how they use their personnel. Uh, uh, sometimes it looks the same, but it could just be a different angle or something like that that makes it hard to scout and hard to guard. Uh, 
uh, and they're always sound. So, so uh, I think Turge is a, I, I think Turge is a terrific coach. I, I think he's an elite coach, and and certainly, uh, uh, you know, he's got Maryland playing extremely, extremely well, and and, and their team is very, very talented. Uh, you know, the, I, I've said this before because it's happened with one of my teams before, but you know, when you're ranked in the top five, you know, for a good portion of a season, uh, uh, at least multiple weeks. That means you have shown everybody that you can play to a number one seed level. And, and I think we're catching a team that even though they're seeded fifth, our guys understand they can play to a one seed. So, so this, this is a hard, this is, this is really a, a hard matchup because we, we really think a lot of, uh, of their team. Let's go back row on the right, then we'll come left and then go right. So Sullivan Courier, Journal Louisville. Uh, two part question. Uh, you've coached various rosters, young, veterans, what's the main difference and do you think that last year when we had two freshman dominated teams in the final four that that was an anomaly or we're going to see more of it? Well, second first, uh, I, I think that we'll see it again. I think, uh, you know, a, a lot of it just depends on uh, uh, good fortune. Uh, you know, the, there's going to be recruiting classes out there that that you know, a, a university is going to get, you know, three of the top 10 or three of the top 15 players in America, so-called, uh, to their respective school. The, the way the way kids are picking schools now, a lot of them want to go with buddies. I mean, uh, so that could happen again. Now, the way it happened last year to have a couple of schools that 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 everything fit perfectly with young kids, I, I don't think that's the that's the rule. I think that's more the exception. But it w it will happen again. And, and uh, uh, there's going to be lightning in a bottle again and, and because some of these young players are so talented. Uh, uh, but certainly for me personally, because uh, I've been on both ends, uh, uh, I'm not sure that there is an exact formula that works better than others. I think talent still prevails more times than not. But, but something about experience and, and, and having guys that have really invested into the program, I think lends itself to having – you know, guys uh, prepare uh, on a daily basis because they know this is what it is for them. Whereas a lot of time, the one and done kids uh, know that hey, this is just a short stop uh, uh, before uh, they move on to to the professional level. So, I mean, give me the best players. That's that would be my philosophy. But certainly, a team like ours right now that that you only you have one senior, but they have a bunch of vets that play a ton. I think is maybe the most enjoyable way to do it. Coach, I'm going over on the left side. Kevin Haskin to be Capital Journal. Hey, Bill, um, just wondering how Frank's doing physically. Is it something you even worry about with his toughness and also if you can just kind of evaluate the point guard matchup in this one? Well, you know, I, I've said this before. Uh, uh, you know, Frank's a little bit like Jim Brown when he gets tackled. It takes him forever to get back to the huddle. So uh, uh, I don't think I think Frank's fine. I think his health is fine. I, I, I think he's had, had the nagging things that, that obviously bother anybody. I mean, does his hip hurt a little bit? Uh, does his foot hurt a little bit? But not to the point where I think he'll be less than 100 percent when the adrenaline gets flowing. And he's going to have to be 100 percent because the point guard matchup is is you know there's a lot of great matchups in this game on paper, but but certainly. Uh, you know, can Frank do a good job on on uh, on Mello? And and because it, when Mello's, you know, on top of his game and when he's in attack mode and 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 uh, uh, he's playing with with ease, uh, he's as good as any guard in the country. So uh, Frank's it, it is going to be a great matchup for Frank, uh, but it'll also be a great matchup for Mello too because they you know they both have to guard each other. It's just not a one way street. Far right side. Uh, Jerry O'Hearn, USA Today Sports. Bill, what's been the biggest difference in the way Wayne has played this season, and particularly in the tournament? Uh, I think that Wayne, in his first two years, uh, settled too much. I, th I think that he did not play to his body or his athletic ability uh, as often as what he can. Because I think Wayne can have great possessions and impact possessions even when he's not shooting the ball, and I think he's doing that more. Uh, he's getting to the free throw line a lot more, and, and he's, he's driving it more uh, and, and not playing to just the perimeter shot. So at, at least for the most part this year, that's been the case. And I think in the tournament, you know, he, 
Wayne, Wayne's one of these guys that, that uh, can give your team a lot of confidence because he can make some plays that nobody else on our team can make. Uh, so so uh, he's kind of like a physical uh, leader for us. Uh, uh, and he's a guy that's got a little bit of size and got a quick release so he can maybe get a shot off that maybe some other guys can't do when you run bad offense. And so it's real important that, that he stay aggressive and he play well from this point forward because you know, from this point forward, everybody's going to guard. And, and what happens is you've got to make you got to make open shots, but you, but you need to be able, to be able to make some tough shots. And, and he's a guy that can make tough shots for us. Stay over on the right. Bill, Greg Eklund, this is for Kansas Public Radio. The market of Louisville has had the uh, number one top TV rankings for college basketball, which leads some to say that this is the mecca for college basketball. How would you make the case for Kansas and Kansas City being the college basketball mecca? Well, I, I think, you know, obviously, you know, in the bluegrass state, everyone loves ball. I mean, that's, that goes without saying. Uh, uh, and and I, I can't speak to television ratings because uh, I have no idea. But I, I will say that, that when, when you stop and think about, uh, you know, obviously us being 30 miles away, Missouri being uh, uh, you know, a couple hours away, K-State being a couple hours away, Wichita being, a, you know, three hours away. And, and, then, and then you look at, uh, you know, college basketball experience being there, the Hall of Fame, and then you look at uh, NAIA uh, uh, National Tournament being there and, and all, the, all the NCAA tournaments that, that have been played in Kansas City Municipal Auditorium or whatever. I think that, that you know, you, you, when, you, when you add up all the history, I think that you could make a case that, that Kansas is probably, the Kansas City area is probably about as knowledgeable and historic a place that our game has seen. Uh, you could say the same thing about Philadelphia, obviously. Uh, 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 but, but, you know, Kentucky, unbelievable history, tradition, and all these things. But, w w but when the inventor of the game is, is your first coach, I think it definitely gives you a leg up on some folks uh, when you start talking about history. Left side now, then we'll hit the right middle. Hi, Coach. Janine Edwards, ESPN, over here. Okay. Hi, how are you? Hey, how are you doing? Um, you said that you might be a tiny bit looser this year and that you think that you're, the personality of your team sometimes rubs off yeah. on the coach. So I'm just curious, in what ways have these players rubbed off on you? How have they rubbed off on you? I, I, I do believe that. You know, they, they say that the team can take on the personality of the coach. But I think a lot of times the, the coach can take on the personality of the team if you trust them, if, 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 you, uh, 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 if you enjoy being around them all the time, not just on the court, but off the court. Uh, uh, if they can give you grief and you can give it back to them and, 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 and in fun ways. And I, 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 I do believe that this team is rubbed off on me because I don't care what a coach says. It's hard to be real loose if your team isn't competing hard or not trying hard and not playing well. I mean, you want to encourage them and give them do better talks to, to, uh, to do better. Uh, uh, but sometimes the, these guys please themselves. And, and, and uh, uh, I've I really, 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 I mean, we've, we've had a ton of one and dones and we've had uh, number one picks and, and, and uh, a lot of lottery picks. But I, and, and I've enjoyed coaching them all, but I don't know if I've enjoyed coaching a collective group more than what I have this year, just because it, it, it's, it's fun to form. I mean, we're not taught, my guys don't get near the credit uh, they deserve for being the, as good of players as they are and NBA prospects, but at least that's my opinion. But the bottom line is, is, is they enjoy that underdog role. They're, recruit, they're, they're recruited to our place with the same expectations that Wiggins and Embiid were recruited to our place. And so when people don't talk about them, that gives them a chip. And, and, and I just love teams that operate that way. And, and, but still yet, they like each other. And, and they basically, you know, don't, they, 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 there's one stat that matters. And, and that's wins and L's, wins and losses, and not individual performances. And they've just been so much fun to be around. Right side, <clears throat> middle. Uh, Chris Lazarino, Kansas alumni coach. Uh, coach Turgeon commented that he heard from uh, Coach Brown this week, and you guys both coached under Coach Brown, and he played for him. Could you just talk about uh, briefly the influence that Coach Brown has on, on, on young basketball talent to help them develop into uh, elite level coaches? And well, you know, uh, 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 you know, Turgeon and Coach are close, and, and they should be. You know, he recruited him, he played for him, and 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 uh, uh, but I would bet. 
that coach is not real comfortable uh, talking to me or Turge about the other team. I, 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 I would bet that. Uh, uh, but, you know, when you're a young player, a young coach, you, th you, th you think you know more than what you do, but you realize you don't know anything when you get around Coach Brown. So the, 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 the fact that you can be around a guy like him early in your career and he can influence you the rest of your life because you can, you can learn, you know, 70% of what you're going to learn in that first year or two just because you don't know anything and he's a wealth of knowledge. And so I think that he would have great impact on anybody that he touches when they're at a young age, especially because, you know, we all had so much to learn and he was such a wealth of knowledge, he, he gave it to us and he didn't hide it from us and he shared it. And, and, and I, I think that, you know, I guarantee Turge still does the same drills he did with Coach. Uh, uh, back in back in the day, and, and uh, I don't know if there's a more of a sign of a respect that a coach could give another coach than actually believing in things that he learned 30 years ago. Coach, last question in the back right corner. Coach Bill uh, C. L. Brown with ESPN.com. You kind of just alluded to players kind of developing maybe a chip on their shoulder. H how would you say that uh, Sheck Diallo has kind of handled? You know, he came in. There were a lot of outside expectations of what he would be. How, how do you feel like he's handled? Uh, maybe not living up to those outside expectations. You know, you know what, Sheck is, uh, and, and, and this isn't coach speak, he, he's as good a kid as we've had. Uh, he, he's been great. Uh, he tries hard every day, works as hard as anybody in our program. Uh, the bottom line with, 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 with Sheck, and, and this, is, this is not a knock to him at all, it's just that we've had some other guys probably perform better with the other players on the court than what, what, what he was doing at the time. And then we got on a roll, and he's kind of been the odd man out. So, so uh, just to be very candid. But, but Shaq will get the last laugh on any, everybody. And I think he knows that. I think he knows he's young in the game, and he's got a lot to learn. But, but certainly uh, uh, his enthusiasm and, and his want to hasn't been, hasn't been uh, dampened at all by, by not playing as much as I know he wants to play. But, but still yet, I feel confident that his, if his number's called, he'll be prepared to deliver because he prepares hard every day. Coach, appreciate your time today. Okay, Gotta thank you, you guys. Go. Good luck.